welcome back to F YouTube, the video outlet for consumers who are really not happy. That's Abby. And which fine business got her in the F YouTube mood? Telstra, Telstra, Telstra. Abby was really not happy after she signed up for a Telstra, Telstra, Telstra prepaid mobile contract and discovered that she'd also been signed up for their Stay Connected service. According to Telstra, it lets you swap your device and secure your data. One bit of data they definitely secure is your credit card details, because Abby found that she was being charged 15 bucks a month, even though she says the Telstra salesperson told her it was a one-off charge. If that's true, Abby, you're entitled to terminate the service under the Australian Consumer Law and to get your money back. But it all comes down to what was said. On F YouTube last week, Kirsten explained that consumers have a right to a copy of recorded phone calls. That can be useful if you're trying to prove that you were misled. But if you go into a store and talk to someone in person, proving exactly what was said no, can be more difficult. Boy. No, you cannot record me. What is it with Telstra and sock puppets? By the way, Abby, you're not the only one unhappy with the Telstra Stay Connected service. 15 bucks a month might seem OK on the surface for regularly upgrading to new model handsets, including the right to replace your phone up to twice a year, even if you just lost it. But the fine print says there's a service fee of $100 to $180 for every replacement. And if you don't send Telstra your old phone, which probably doesn't happen that much with lost or stolen phones, there's a device non-return fee. So even though you've paid a monthly fee plus a service fee, you could still be paying the price of another phone. It's a great deal! There is a bunch of other nasties in the fine print too, so we can sort of understand why Abby was... Really not happy. And remember, if a telco makes you feel like that, the formal way to send them an FU is through the Telecommunications Industry Ombudsman. They suck! Next up, it's Luke, whose video was a little more sober in tone. I come to you today with an inconsistency in food product labelling which is extremely troubling. As far as I am aware, alcoholic beverages are the only food product in Australia which is exempt from displaying ingredient and nutritional information. And he's right. Alcoholic beverages are on the exempt list of the nutrition and ingredient labelling rules. Although, Luke, booze isn't the only one. There's a bunch of others on the exemption list, including bottled water, which you can kind of understand. Alcoholic drinks, though, are a controversial exclusion and quite a few people have complained to us about it. But for now, if you want to get the nutritional information about alcohol, you're going to need to go somewhere else. You've registered over 400 calories. <gasps> Luke has his own theory on why booze is exempt. I dare say the industry doesn't want us to know how many calories, and in particular sugar, is in our favourite drinks. Some people think that putting nutritional info on alcohol is a good idea that might reduce consumption. Or might not. For what it's worth, Luke, Food Standards Australia says that most of the time nutritional information isn't necessary because alcohol is of minor nutritional significance. Although that might be because when it comes to standing up to the alcohol industry, Food Standards Australia is of minor regulatory significance. So there you go, Luke. I hope that clears things up for you. Cheers. Thank you. Mind you, not having to list ingredients gives the makers of alcoholic ciders in particular a lot of leeway. A cider like Carlsberg's Summersby, for example, markets itself as all natural. However, our very good friends at The Australian reported that it's labelled a premium European cider despite being made in Laverton, Melbourne, using apple juice concentrate shipped from Europe and reconstituted here. Hmm, maybe I won't drink to that. One unhealthy product that is definitely getting less unhealthy, though, is these. Red Rock Deli Chips, one of the highest priced brands on the market. They've changed their package size from 185 gram to 160 gram and still charge the same price. Thanks a lot, F you, Red Rock Deli. Oh, and you're right, Brian. And they're not the only one doing it. Strongbow, Peters, Rexona, Dolmio, Birdseye have all done exactly the same thing. And there's no doubt about Red Rock Deli, because Jeff tested it. I measured each individual chip. The thickness is still the same, but there are less chips. Well, it turns out that the company that says its chips taste like Tasmanian mountain pepper and braised beef and 
Hunter Valley roast chicken, lemon and thyme isn't always entirely up front with you. What's all that about? Trying to distract us from noticing that we are paying more for something. Doesn't that seem a bit dodgy? Dodgy. And finally tonight, a nephew that's a little closer to home from Andrea. I felt ripped off tonight watching the checkout. The TV guide said it went till 8.32, but finished at 8.27. That's five whole minutes shorter than the advertised time. Socks on the other foot now, hey, check out. Thanks, Andrea. It's an interesting issue you raise, actually, uh, as it happens under section 435, subsection 2A of the...